Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for being here. So I work indeed at GE Healthcare in a team called Global Design, which is composed of designers and researchers, and we work on various projects within the healthcare industry. Historically, we designed uh, medical equipment. Then we started designing the spaces that would go with this equipment. And now we are looking at the entire experience of both the patients and the medical staff. So today, uh, I'm going to talk to you about five different areas that we find particularly interesting in terms of innovation, technology, as well as social behaviors. So when we work on our project, we work both on a ready-to-market solution as well as more futuristic advanced concept. So this is going to be an overview of uh, both of those type of uh, innovations. So the first area that we find uh, particularly interesting, we call it natural connection. So it's this idea of creating a natural bond between the patient and the hospital. So for instance, today as a patient, if you don't have a natural connection with the hospital, you would be less likely to go there and you will be less likely to be proactive about your health. So we feel like this area would raise a lot of opportunities uh, in terms of predictive medicine. So one way of doing that is to look at the entire process and try to remove all the possible friction that a patient may encounter uh, in his journey. So today, if you go to a general practitioner and then if you need to go to the hospital, the link is not necessarily made. So we are looking at different ways to really consider all the steps of this experience and to really make them as seamless as possible. So from being at home to going to the hospital, checking in, staying at the hospital, checking out, going back home, all those different phases um, can be connected in a seamless manner. Another aspect uh, of this natural connection that is important is uh, meaningful information. So being able to deliver the right information at the right time in the right manner. So today, uh, as a patient, if you are given a medical imagery, a radiology, for instance, you may not be able to understand it or to read it. So we are looking at different ways to explain diagnosis as well as medical procedure uh, better to patients. One way of doing that is to use virtual reality as a way to make the patient more active in the understanding uh, of what's going to happen. So we have a few projects which are using virtual re reality to explain medical procedure, uh, as well as to explain diagnosis. Also, on top of delivering the right information, uh, we also need to personalize the message that we are going to communicate. Because depending uh, on the age of the patient, the gender, the life stage, even the culture, the, me the message is going to be different. So we are also looking at different ways to make it personalized to the people and to the places. And all of that uh, brings us to the idea of making care accessible everywhere. So there is a lot of interesting innovation in telemedicine with connected uh, accessories that you can wear at home with AI assistants. There are a lot of solutions uh, that are emerging that enable you as a person and as a patient to be much more proactive uh, in the way uh, in which you are dealing with your health. So this idea of uh, care going to the patient rather than the patient coming to the care centers. A few years ago, for instance, uh, we designed a product called Viscan, which is a portable ultrasound solution. And that was the idea of reaching out to people who were not be we are not able to come to the hospital. So we are still exploring a lot of ideas in this idea of uh, making health much more mobile and accessible. Another area that we find interesting is um, the topic of collective intelligence and how we can connect all the dots and really leverage uh, the power of the community and the power of the data that we can access. So one uh, technology would be this idea of a digital twin, which could be uh, both for patient as well as for the medical equipment. So having uh, a digital version of ourselves with all the data and all the medical history that concerns us, and that will be continuously evolving so that we, we are always aware of what's happening. And that will be the same for equipment. It would be a good way of knowing exactly how a piece of equipment is doing and what can be done to improve it.
And all of that uh, data that could be collected from those uh, digital twins or from those pieces of equipment could feed uh, other pieces of equipment. And then those solutions could evolve over time and learn over time and be more and more efficient. So there is definitely a lot of opportunities in that vein. Uh, with artificial intelligence that we also, we call it augmented intelligence because it's not only artificial now, it's a much more augmented version uh, of what it is. So this idea of using uh, the data to act at a certain time, but also to have solutions that can predict what's going to happen, that can provide some trends or patterns, as well as advise uh, on what needs to be done. So we can imagine that those type of equipment could um, advise on clinical decision and actually assist and help doctors in the decision that they need um, to take. So this data is really powerful um, and data can be collected from a lot uh, of different sources. What's also interesting about data is that it's mobile. So if a doctor cannot reach a patient, potentially the data could reach the doctor. So we can also imagine a lot of opportunities around that. Uh, data is also definitely sensitive. So we talk, for instance, about the idea of data marketplaces, which would be a place where the data could be shared and transferred, even sold uh, and bought. So that's an interesting idea, but it's definitely a sensitive topic. Uh, one way of making it more acceptable would be to anonymize all the data, because we need to understand uh, where the data come from, in which context it comes from, but we don't necessarily need to understand who it belongs to. So anonymity would be definitely one way um, of using uh, this data as a powerful uh, source of knowledge and expertise. So another area is around this idea of achieving a seamless workflow, uh, in the sense a uh, seamless workflow both for patients as well as healthcare professionals. So um, today if you go um, to the hospital, you may not know where to go, you may not know who to talk to, you may not know what you are supposed to do and what you are not supposed to do. So achieving uh, this state where you would know exactly where and when you need to be is an opportunity that we are exploring in different ways. So one interesting technology is indoor geolocalization, helping patients find uh, their way around the hospital thanks to their mobile devices so that they know exactly where and when uh, they need to be. And that would be interesting because then if patients know where and when they need to be, they don't need to wait anymore so they can be doing something else in the meantime. Also, the idea of rethinking the space and creating adaptive pathways, so pathways that would adapt uh, to the patient or to the pathologies, rather than the patient trying to adapt to the existing structures. So those uh, type of projects already exist. For instance, there is a mammography experience that is called One Stop Clinic, which is uh, a space where everything needed for mammography screening is in the same space. And you can do all the exam in one day. So as a patient, I could go there in the morning, do a mammography screening in the morning, and then do a biopsy in the afternoon if needed. So that means that I don't need to go back home, wait for a few days, wait for the result, come back. Everything can happen in one day in the same place. So we can start to see how it would be much more efficient, both for the patient as well as for the medical staff. So then if you, need, if you know where and when uh, you need to be and if everything is condensed in the same place, potentially we could reduce or remove the waiting times. And uh, that's interesting because waiting is usually a source of anxiety because if you're waiting, you have time to think and reflect, you may be waiting for some results. So that's a huge source of uh, stress and anxiety for patients. So if we ma manage to find some way to reduce or completely remove the waiting times, potentially we can also reduce um, patient anxiety. And then if you're not waiting, you can be doing something else. So we are also looking at how we can uh, find different, provide different services or provide different activities to the patient so that they can keep up uh, with their busy life and do something else rather than waiting. And that would be also interesting from a business point of view because then the hospital could provide different services or different activities to the patient. And it's important because an hospital is still a business and still needs to be efficient and productive in order to sustain. 
So we are looking at different ways to uh, monitor this productivity and to make it uh, more efficient. So one idea would be uh, to connect all the equipment. So we shifted from um, a model of designing product to a model of designing platform, which are composed of connected products. So the, those pieces of equipment could talk to each other and we could also gather uh, the data that come from those equipment. And that would be good to know what's going on right now with those pieces of equipment, but potentially this data could also feed the development of future solutions. So again, that data can be collected and could feed uh, other solution uh, and could create some augmented intelligence that would be able to predict and advise on what needs to be done. Uh, we start seeing emerging the trend of command centers within hospitals, which are a, a centralized place where all the information about the, the hospital is gathered in one place and that can provide a 360 view um, to the people, to the staff of the hospital as well as coming with a visual dynamic dashboard that will be a visualization of what's happening in the hospital right now. So that's a good way for people to know what's going on, but also to adapt their behaviors and also to find some solution to make uh, the entire hospital more efficient and more productive. And the last area is around this idea of life empowerment meaning that um, going to the hospital shouldn't be uh, necessarily a negative experience. It could actually be a place that empowers and educates patients. So one way of doing that would be to provide some more education um, to patients about their health so that they can be more in control of their health and then they can start thinking holistically about their health. And then if we do that for the health, potentially we could also do that for their life. So empowering and educating patients so that they are more in control of their life and that once they leave the hospital, they can potentially make better decisions or take actions upon their life. The idea that an hospital would be a place uh, that provides augmented capacities rather than uh, reducing capacities of people as well as thinking about the space as living spaces. So spaces where you can keep on going with your busy life. So you may need to be in, st in touch with people or you may need to keep up with activities. Um, if we think, for instance, about pediatrics and children's hospitals, uh, it's important to think about the different activities that families may need uh, to be doing. So we can start thinking about uh, the room as also being a living room so that people can uh, enjoy their night together or a kitchen where patients and their family can cook together or different services or activities that may be available so that people can keep on uh, with their life and so that life doesn't stop when you are at the hospital. So those are just a few examples of areas that we find uh, promising and interesting with all the innovation technologies as well as the challenges uh, that come with it. We, so at GE, even though GE is a big company, we shifted from a model really focused on product to a model focused on workflows and processes. And we are trying to really think holistically about the solutions that we develop, as well as being more and more inclusive. So we collaborate a lot with our clients uh, and we integrate them in our process, as well as with patients. Because at the end, we design solutions that are going to be used by both patients um, and the medical staff. So we are not the only one to do that. Uh, the good news is that we are all going in the right direction and there is a lot of interesting opportunities. There is a lot of things that can be done to improve uh, the patient experience. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.